scrambled eggs on the griddle. It should be pretty straightforward, but it seems like there's a lot of controversy building on how to make a simple scrambled egg on the griddle. Today, it's all about should I add liquid to my eggs when I scramble my eggs? I don't know. We're about to find out. Lately, it's been one of those things that's been going through my mind and I cannot for the life of me shake it. I get people all the time that tell me I make my scrambled eggs wrong, that I should try this and I should try that. So if you're one of those people and I debunk the myth, then I'm sorry. This is my personal opinion only and I stand by it thoroughly. I get people all the time that tell me I should add water to my scrambled eggs because I'll make it fluffier because of the steam. I get people that tell me I should add milk to my scrambled eggs because it makes them fluffy and because of the steam. And I also get people to say that you should use heavy cream. I know my answer before I do this, but I'm doing this as a public service announcement. Let's see if I'm right. Enough talking. Let's get to action. Oh, by the way, if you stand, uh, if you go all the way through, we're going to do some like really cool things I've been meaning to do. I didn't think it's worth the video, but it is the way that we have enjoyed our breakfast with my time off lately. And it is fantastic. Blackstone griddle is preheating on low. This is the deal. Heavy cream, milk, agua, okay? We have got uh, four sets of eggs, two each. And the last one, I'm gonna add butter, which is something I swear by because the fat content, I think it makes it velvety, smooth. It's my preference. All right, we've got two eggs in each bowl. I'm just gonna kinda do what I do, a little salt. Another high controversy is to salt before or after. I like to salt before. All right. So we're going to do this the same way. We're going to put them on the griddle. Just like that, okay? One tablespoon of water. One tablespoon of half, I mean, a heavy cream. One tablespoon of milk. This last one right here is going to get a heavy dose of butter, but we will put that on the griddle as we do it. All right, just do a quick, I'm sure you guys don't need to see me scramble eggs. Everything's going to be consistent. I'm just going to scramble in the same way I normally would. All right, one of the very few times we'll use an infrared gun, especially for the newbies out there. I know a lot of people have gotten griddles the last couple months. My ideal temp, because I don't cook to temp, I kind of uh, skirt around the issue because I do not believe it matters. Um, high 200s, low 300s, okay? So I had to bring this bad boy out of retirement. So let's just say we're at 330, okay? What I've done, I've cut my two uh, middle griddle burners off. That's my hottest two burners. Quickly, don't overdo it. You're not dousing it. You're calming it down. What you can do Add a little bit of water. There we go. Now we've cooled down a little, okay? So what we're gonna do is turn on the griddle back on and it won't take but a second. All right, so now that's out of the way. Every single one of these will cook with just a, a touch of butter. Mine is gonna have a little bit more butter in it because that's how I like my eggs cooked. One is the water water added while that's going down i'll rotate to number two let that butter start melting how you cook your eggs are like medium soft runny that's up to you that's not the point of the video Heavy cream. All 
I think one of the best advantages of doing eggs to get fluffy eggs is not disturbing them too much. The next one I'll do um, with the milk, I'm gonna show you guys something that I believe in more than the water and all that for fluffy eggs. I believe in the layering method of the eggs, like the pulling and not chopping. So what does that mean? Let me show you how I would do it. The griddle's starting to warm up a little bit. You guys can see the difference, how the eggs come down. They boil up really fast. To me, I believe, see how the eggs are coagulating right there? They're layering on each other. To me, that's how I think you get fluffy eggs. It's like the pulling method. See, we're not, what I, what I don't like seeing is people chopping them up unless there's a reason like going on something small. But I think if you chop them up, it flattens them out. I think it overcooks it too. Last but not least, for two eggs, I'm looking at about three quarters of a tablespoon, maybe a hair more, maybe even close to a tablespoon. So those have no liquid added, no just liquid. a just little bit of extra butter. That's it. You know, we're treating your griddle just like a big skillet. See, this is the pulling method I'm talking about. Notice how I'm just pulling the eggs together. That's why I like that spatula too. When you add your cheeses, that's a complete different video. Each cheese has its own different um, melting technique, whether it be shredded because whether you shred it yourself or you buy it from a bag, that's different. Then you got your American, your pepper jack, your provolone, your mozzarella. All right, just like that. So basically that scrambled egg 101, okay? Not hard at all. Some things to remember, temperature of your grill matters. I do not believe in the chopped up method. I believe more in the, um, the fluffy style pulling method. Um, if you're new to griddling, it's very important to pre-game. Imagine the cook in your head. Have everything available and ready to go. Eggs, nine times out of ten. I can't think of many different reasons why you wouldn't. Eggs are always the last thing to go on your griddle. Have a clean griddle. If your griddle's too hot, cool it down some, and you can have perfect eggs in a flash. Okay, taste test. All right. That is the water. Heavy cream, milk, a little extra butter. Were you right? I won't say a word. You do it. <laughs> All right. Before I before before I say a single word, because listen, it's not. If you guys see my waistline, you act like I've never made an egg before. And not one restaurant have I ever been to in the back of the kitchen have we ever added moisture to our eggs except like a high fat. Um, I mean, heavy cream I can understand, but butter is typically our go-to. We've never added water. We've never added milk. We've never, had, we've never added anything. And we've had some very expensive egg dishes. So with that being said, you just tried them all. I did. Okay. You tell me what you want to say first. This one, this one, and this one all taste the same. All of them. And this one is definitely more flavorful and richer. Rich. rich. That is the key. It's rich. It, it, it elevates it. That the, the fats and the butter kind of like just meld and coexist with the eggs to elevate the eggs. And if you're going to have a dish, you might as well just elevate it. I think these three together, if you're blindfolded, or not even blindfolded. I don't think you can tell the difference. You, I mean, maybe just because in my mind, I know heavy cream's a little bit richer. Yeah. Water, okay, so what about fluffiness? Do you see any difference in fluffiness? Well, I definitely agree with you that the chopping is not good. <laughs> it's a mouthfeel, right? 
You could yeah. taste it. Yeah. Right? These make like large, like just foldable. Um, Fluffy. Yeah. You know, you see how moist they stay. The chopping, I think, just helps overcook it I was a lot say, faster. Yeah, it seems like it, they're drier. Well, what happens is you create more surface area. More surface area hits the griddle, and the griddle cooks it a lot faster. Okay. And then lastly, see, the, this is a good. This, that's a good. That's a good one for me right there. I like that one because it's just so together. But there's no flavor difference, and water definitely didn't make this more Fluffy. fluffier, no. or, you know, or anything like that. So I had my opinion all along. I knew it. We live by it. So now that that's out of the way, our favorite breakfast, super easy. We got four eggs. If you much. guys, um, those are over easy, honey. No, no they're not. <laughs> I had to think about it for a second. <laughs> uh, my wife is a goat cheese connoisseur. Yes. So you could substitute cottage cheese. You obviously can add American cheese. We love the tang. And creaminess. Um, some good fat in the morning. Notice how he didn't do that in his hand. He did it on the cutting board. Yeah, we mentioned that several times. I'll never forget that. That's a... Uh, Worst cut you've ever gotten. That was brutal. Yeah, I think the goat cheese really works well with this. The, um, the tang, the texture, the creaminess, it just all works. So would you say about a tablespoon of crumbled goat cheese? I'd probably say two to three. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you really like the goat cheese. Don't be shy on your butter, as you just noticed. I'm not adding as much butter for the four eggs versus two eggs because we do have that goat cheese in there. So it's something to remember. And last tip of the day, because good Lord, it's just scrambled eggs. Let's not beat a dead horse. If you add your butter to your griddle and your butter starts burning, that means... Griddle's too hot. Thank you. Salt. Yep. And I don't like to overwork my eggs. I really don't. I don't, I just let them cook. I like to fold them, kind of just move them around. Actually, one of my favorite egg devices is my bench scraper, oddly enough, because I think it just, see that? All right, like I said, the way you like your eggs is personal preference. To me, that is what eggs are all about. Moist, fluffy, buttery. That goat cheese just kind of melts in there, adds that tang. I like to do the, the uh, toasted side up earlier. All we did was just add butter to the griddle. We are both in love with the seasoning, the bagel seasoning, everything bagel seasoning. It's a way to get good fats in the morning. You guys are always asking for healthy recipes. This is one of our favorites. And I like extra almond. I love this thing season. There you go. That's it right there in a nutshell. It's really up to you whether you eat it with a fork. Like I said, you can put those uh, sun-dried tomatoes on there. We really like them because the tang, it just, it just balances. Or you just pick it up and... All right, guys, there you go. The do's, the good, the bad, the don'ts, you name it. That's just what it's like when you put it on the griddle. You guys see everything that I just went through. The results were on the page. Now it's up to you guys just to taste it, see which ones you like, right? If you guys are interested, we have a membership button down below. It's just a way to help out the channel. Uh, we appreciate each and every one of you for taking time to do it. So if you haven't, check out The Griddle Group on Facebook is where we talk about food, where people tell me all the time that I should try this. And finally, I said, hey, let's try it. Never know what's going to happen next. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Pound the notification button. Share it with your friends. Just get out and start making something. Just make whatever you like. That's what's mm. most important. And we like this.